Oh, how's it going today? Oh, back. All right, what's next? Uh, fall is upon us. That means freaking winter is right around the corner. That means the air conditioner has got to come back out of the window and it's time to turn the heaters on. Now, for the last four years, uh, I have been heating this shop with two oil-filled radiant space heaters which is an exceedingly stupid idea because space heaters pull a tremendous amount of amperage. They, uh, they tend to overheat your wall sockets. Uh, they're not meant to run 24 seven. And I had two of them running in here. And one of my very first videos was replacing a wall socket because it freaking melted from having a space heater hooked into it. Now I was doing that because I didn't really know any other way to actually heat this freaking area. And did some reading, you know, I actually know how to do that. Uh, watched a few videos, did some more reading. I've got some of them uh, home electrical books, nothing too complicated, you know, like uh, see Dick wire in a light socket, see Dick get electrocuted, see Jane run all the way to the bank with the life insurance check because she had a huge policy taken out on that Dick. But anyways, I kind of figured out a few things that I could hook 220 or I guess 240 up in my shop. So I got this, there was a moth under it, the Dynaglo heater from, uh, from Menards, one of them big box hardware stores. It was 95 bucks for this heater. And I had to figure out how to put a 240 circuit in here. I'm not gonna show you how I hooked it up because it's already all hooked up, but we're gonna go over it. Now, let me preference this by saying, do not take anything I'm saying right here as the way you should go about doing it. Don't follow a goddamn thing I say. This is not educational. This is not informative. It is probably not even entertaining. The purpose of this video is nothing more than it is a content video because it's hard to put out content and I gotta have something out every goddamn week. So this is a content video, nothing more. Don't follow what I'm saying because if you're an electrician and you watch this, you're gonna go, oh my God, this guy is an idiot. We know that is well established. I'm pretty sure we've established that through many of my videos in the past. So right now, this is on, as you can see, there is a light right here. I shouldn't say it's on, there's power to it. There's 240 volts going to it. So I've got a, uh, a black and a brown and a ground wire all hooked in here. The black and the brown are both running uh, approximately 120 volts. Anytime you hear anybody say, you know, it's a, it's a 110 outlet, it's actually a 120 outlet. Voltage coming into your house is 120. You need to double that up to make a 240 circuit to power this heater. So now hopefully this winter, my shop is gonna stay nice and warm and be a lot goddamn safer than it was being heated off of space heaters. So let's go over here to the uh, workbench and we'll go over some other freaking. Now, the reason why I am capable of doing this wiring is because I stay somewhat intoxicated when I'm at home. That way I don't fear this kind of stuff. Ah, what I've got here is a sub panel. This is not the kind of sub panel that I currently have in my shop, but it doesn't matter a sub panel is a sub panel. Sub panel means your main box is out there and you've run wiring in to run an auxiliary sub panel. And that's what this is. Uh, the wiring that's gonna come in here, uh, you should buy, you need to buy a separate grounding bar to screw in here because they don't put grounding bars in here. This is a neutral bar. Uh, these are gonna be your main power bus bars in here. Here and here. They screw up my freaking audio putting that on there. But you're gonna have a hot wire here and a hot wire here. And as you can see, they alternate. Let me see. <clears throat> your uh the inside of your bus bar this power wire right here is going to be grounded it's also going to have a neutral but it'll jump from this post to this post to this post and then this bus bar will power this post this post and this post that's important for when you're trying to hook up your 240 because this is 120 this one's 120 that one's 120 that one's 120 that one's 120 that one's 120. now when you hook them up, you've got a single pole breaker, which is, I believe, what they would call single phase. You're gonna have the black wire coming into here, which is gonna be your hot wire, and then everything going out to your, uh, your appliances, whatever, your wall outlets. The black wire is gonna be hot. The white wire in your uh, 
wiring schematic is going to be the neutral and then it's either going to be a green wire or a uh, bare copper. Let me, I got to have a piece of wire. Hold on. Now this is 10 gauge. This is called 10 2. It's 10 gauge wire. It's got two leads and a ground. So you got your white wire, which is a neutral in a 120 circuit, the black wire, which is your hot wire in a 120 circuit, and then your ground. And on a 240 circuit, white wire, black wire are both going to be hot wires. They'll both be carrying 120 volts. And then, of course, you got to have your ground. To run a 240 circuit over to there, I need a 240 breaker. Because a 120 breaker, what it's gonna do is it's got a hook right here, it's got an electrical connection right there. It's, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna it's got a clip right there, it'll hook onto that clip, and then it'll snap into place. And you hook your wiring up, ground, whatever. Now you've got turn your breaker on, you got voltage going out. And that would be a standard 120 freaking circuit. To make that heater work, you gotta have a two pole breaker. So this will send 240 volts out. And the reason why it does that is because it's a two pole breaker, it's gonna have two tabs on, on the bottom that will connect into your bus bar. So it's gonna pick up power from this bus bar off of this terminal, and then it's gonna pick up power from this bus bar to this terminal. Now this isn't the right breaker for this box. This one was purchased by mistake. It's supposed to be the breaker that goes in my shop breaker box, but this is a Eaton style CR type breaker or CH type breaker where my box is an Eaton style BR type breaker. So this fucker wouldn't hook in there. So I had to buy a different one and I just didn't bother taking it back. But basically what it's gonna do with them two electrical connectors, it's gonna snap into this post and this post, which will pick up power from this one and this one. So now you've got 120 volts going to this screw and that screw, which then will go into the black wire and white wire, which will connect there. And then the ground wire will be on the ground terminal. And then it'll go out ground wire to the ground post in there, black wire, white wire to the two posts in there. Now you've got 240. Now, <clears throat> When I hooked it all up, turned it on, my heater still didn't work. It got nothing. I, I went over there, I'm checking, and it had, it had 120 volts going to both of the terminals in the heater. And it wouldn't do anything. The lights wouldn't come on, nothing. It's like, well, what the hell? Uh, I figured I had a faulty heater, so I was getting ready to take it down. Like, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a little bit more research on this. And I went and watched some of the, probably the most boring videos you can possibly ever imagine watching. It's uh, electrical theory uh, videos and how electrons flow and, and just exceedingly boring shit. But I figured out what the problem was is my shop was wired, uh, I believe it's called single phase. What it was is I only had one hot wire coming in and it had a jump wire from one bus bar going over to the other bus bar. So I only had a single source of electrons going into this. So that thinks it's picking up a source of electricity from the same, same source. It has to have alternating flows of electrons or whatever in order to, I guess, uh, you gotta have two different sources. It's gotta be two phase freaking electricity in order for your 240 freaking uh, appliance to work. So I had to go to my main breaker my the main box out there in the corn crib and rewire that and went in there and found out it's i'm running a uh, a single pole breaker to supply power out to this shop to the sub panel so i had to pull the single pole breaker put a double pole breaker in there it's got i believe eight gauge wire coming out here and uh, i put the double pole breaker in there hooked it all up, 
flipped it on and it made this god awful freaking buzzing sound. Now this is where, uh, you know, probably drinking came into, into play is I forgot a critical step. That critical step was I forgot to change my box in here over from single phase to double phase to where I was still running a jumper wire between the two bus bars and I, uh, I still had the white wire connected to the, the uh, neutral bar, which means I'm sending 120 volts down the line to friggin' the neutral bar. And yeah, it made some, luckily there was no sparks, nothing caught on fire, but as soon as I flipped that breaker on out there, it was just this godly loud, scary freaking electrical buzzing sound. And it was like, shit, I know what I gotta do. So I ran out here, sw swapped the wires around. It took, you know, all of, you know, two minutes to freaking do it. Went back out there, flipped the freaking Breaker on, no buzzing, came out here, checked each individual circuit. I got power, started turning things on. Everything came on. The light on my freaking heater came on, turned it on. It's like, fuck yeah, lo and behold, I have a working 240 volt freaking furnace. I really wish I would have known this information when I built this shop because then I wouldn't have this god awful orange cable stapled across my ceiling going over there it would have been like all the other wiring in here it would have been encased in the wall in conduit ran over there dropped down through a pipe but i am not climbing up into that ceiling and trying to freaking do that for one thing the rafters are like six feet apart and and there's about four foot of uh of uh shake and rake insulation up in there they uh, it would be It'd be easier to take the roof off the building and come in from above than it would be to actually try and climb across here and drop a line down into that, that breaker box. But anyways, hooking up 240 isn't all that difficult. It's actually exceedingly simple if your sub panel or your main box is actually already wired properly because the only thing you need to do to run a 240 circuit is a double pole breaker. Once again, do not listen to me. Don't take anything I say. And it's like, well, that fucking idiot did it. I can do it. Ah, no, you can't. You're going to get yourself killed. Don't do what I say. Don't do what I do. I'm just talking to a fucking camera out here in the shop drinking beer. And this is not to teach you a goddamn thing. So don't, don't forget, subscribe, like, notifications. Remember, I'm an idiot. See you next time.